Guys, I'm going a little crazy here. It's the week of May 11th and I'm fighting like heck not to be a degenerate and download TikTok. Anyways, I hope you're safe and happy and healthy. Quick reminder about today's interview. I timestamped the interview below in the first comment. So you can skip to the critical moments where the CEO shares revenue data or growth data or things like that. That'll save you time. Number two, our founder shout out this week goes to Deep Ankar Alawat, building a great stealth company out there in India. And lastly, we're about to play today's interview. I'm gonna hang out in the comments for 30 minutes to engage with any questions or comments that you guys leave. All right. Here we go. Hello, everyone. My guest today is Jeremy Carnell. He's a serial entrepreneur and has founded four companies, including one which he scaled to more than 100 million bucks in gross revenue. He's got significant experience in operating and scaling digital platforms and has helped a significant, he's helped run significant operations in the US, the United Kingdom, and Singapore. Currently, he is the president and CEO of a company called True Lytics. All right, Jeremy, you ready to take us to the top? Absolutely. All right. The so COVID nineteen edition. The COVID edition. That's right. <laughs> so, 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 what? We're both hunkered down here in in Texas. Um, for folks that uh, that haven't heard of TrueLytics, tell us what it does. What's the product do? Sure. So, TrueLytics is a SaaS platform right now focused in the wealth management space. Uh, all industries, but them in particular, are faced with what we're calling the great transition, which is just the the tsunami of retirements that are about to happen because of the baby boomers. And wealth management has done a very poor job in, in, in filling its ranks with a younger generation. And I think Sorelli and Associates uh, predicts that the industry needs to recruit and or bring in 250,000 new financial advisors just to meet current demands. And so uh, TrueLytics is a SaaS platform that's an advisor transition management platform, and it uh, helps wealth management enterprises with uh, sort of an end-to-end -end solution, helps them with recruiting financial advisors, helps them with practice management and optimizing their business, uh, protects that asset through an emergency continuity module, and then gives that asset a path for either strategic growth and or an exit through our uh, matchmaking solution. So it's, it's that, and it's the first one of its kind. Up until this point, the industry's really been dominated by professional services. And give me, before we jump into the product, give me a sense of size today. What, what revenue are you doing? So we are right now, I think around 1.1 million in annual reoccurring revenue. We launched the enterprise solution in the middle of, uh, two, in June of 2018. Okay. And was that your first revenue coming in in 2018 or you had revenue before that? No. So we purchased, the core of this application was uh, IP we acquired from an investment bank in the middle of 2016. And the way that intellectual property was designed uh, was really focused on selling direct to financial advisory firms. And so when we launched in 2017, that was what we did. We were trying to sell $1,075 licenses direct to financial advisors. That's not that's a that's a recipe for well a very difficult business <laughs> and so we why they just didn't have budget or well the, it's well there's a, several different dynamics one is a lot of them are older and not necessarily um uh that savvy with technology two is that a lot of these are lifestyle businesses and uh you know paying a thousand seventy five dollars for a uh, for a tool that would require them to do self-practice management was also sort of a, a, a tall order um, when we pivoted to wealth management enterprises, that's really when things took off for us. Because, so what, by the way, what is that? I think my, I don't know what that you mean when you say well, an enterprise, wealth management yes, enterprise. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. It, it, the wealth management industry is a relatively convoluted value chain. So it's made up of uh, nor several different layers. You've got independent broker dealers, you have custodians, you have asset managers. We, we view that set as a wealth management enterprise. And then if you expand beyond that, you have RIAs, uh, you have then uh, connected within things like independent broker dealers, OSJs, Office of Supervisory Jurisdictions. They're their own sort of mini enterprise. And then beyond that are the independent financial advisory firms. So it's it's a alphabet soup of layers. So can you name can you put some faces to those descriptions? Can you name a couple customers that we might know that use you? Yeah. So we have, uh, as far as our top enterprise customers are concerned, we work with Citera, LPL, uh, Capital Group, HD Vest, Brinker, uh, Carson Group, uh, Advisor Group, um, Fidelity, the like the, the likes of that. Okay, so people definitely have heard of Fidelity, so that that's helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so so about one point one in ARR, and about how many uh, customers have you scaled to today? So we have six 
Well, so we, in our database is 7,500 independent financial advisory firms. Now, the bulk of that, 90% of that came from the wealth management enterprises, of which we have 16 of those enterprise relationships. Got it. So these are these are people, these are paying like very high amounts. What's what's the average one paying per year? So the average uh, annual contract value is $70,000 and they pay uh, that, uh, they sign up for three year contracts. And, and back us into that. So, so it's seventy thousand dollars per year, and they pay two ten up front. Yeah. So no. So our pricing uh, is is really tiered on the number of affiliated financial advisory firms for the with those enterprises. So it it starts at anything less than fifty, and then it goes up to um, if you if you have seven thousand or more financial advisory firms. LPL is a huge independent broker dealer. A Cetera is another one. They have like eight. Thousand. Well, Cetera has, I think, over eight thousand independent financial advisory firms as part of their broker dealer. They are, as our pricing fee is concerned, that would put them at one hundred and twenty thousand dollar annual fee paid uh, annually for three years. Okay, got it. So one hundred twenty thousand a year divided by eight thousand, it's about fifteen dollars a seat per year. Yeah, and we sell and we sell directly to financial advisory firms uh, through our website. All of that self service and that is a thousand or that's 99 bucks a month so about a thousand seventy five a year and so it's a huge it's it's really big value or at least savings for an enterprise to come in and purchase this for their entire network versus having their network come to us directly yeah massive so again and put, to put all this on a timeline you launched the company in, in 2016 with that acquisition yeah Okay, and what did you guys spend on that, or did you were able to get that for free or a trade or something? No, no. So, so we we've raised it, since our inception. Um, we've had two different rounds of, of fundraising. Early on, when we to acquire the IP, was like we raised about a million dollars generally from friends and family and some industry insiders. And then at the beginning of 2018, I think we did another two and a half million or so. I think in all, it's a little over. Three million dollars that we we've, uh, we've generated, and again, all primarily from industry insiders, no professional money. Okay, and again, scale today to about what is that a hundred and uh, hundred and ten ish thousand dollars per month, something like that. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, yep. and where were you a year ago? Do you remember? Yes. So here, I'll let's see here. Uh, so last, let's see, enterprise uh, annual reoccurring revenue. Um, uh, well, let's look at monthly reoccurring revenue. So we ended uh, 2020 with 122,000. You mean 2019? Uh, uh, 2019. I'm sorry. Thank you. We ended 2019 with 122,000 in MRR. That was a 109 percent increase over 2018, which was at 53,915. That's got it. Yeah, that's good. That's good growth. So yeah. what? Uh, and what do you think you'll grow at in 2020, considering the virus? Is that what has changed for you? Uh, yeah, exactly. So we we actually had. Uh, we had pretty reasonable goals going into the year where we were just looking to add a net new 1 million. And had we done that, uh, we would have generated a $400,000 profit at the end of the year. Um, and uh, and what was your profit but, last year? I'm sorry? What was your no, profit last year? So our EBITDA last year, we, we weren't profitable last year. Again, we had about six months in the green, but we ended with negative Five hundred forty thousand um, dollars, and uh, a negative sort of forty eight percent EBITDA. Um, but you know, going into our basically our our, our second full year, uh, we had a path to actually get to break even cash flow positive uh, by the end of twenty twenty. We've reset that. Um, I'm um, I'm a big fan of the book uh, Infinite Game by Simon Sinek. I don't know if you read it. But that whole the theory of that whole book is to stay in the game as long as possible. And given the sort of left curve, the black swan event of, of COVID-19 and the pandemic, what we've seen early on is a lot. We, we've got five million dollars in our pipeline. We, we had uh, an expectation, again, of, of closing a million of that. We've seen in Q1 uh, basically a lot of decisions being pushed into the basically in the middle of the year, if not the back half of the year. So that's really had us revise down our expectations. Um, and, and we need more data points, uh, such as whether or not 
enterprises are going to be willing to spend in this time. Um, so far, we've seen small, like not enough for me to be convinced. And so we're really preparing to, again, just make sure we're in this game for the long run. So we've really uh, reduced uh, where we could in the OPEX. Um, we, we still have some really good client opportunities in front of us. But instead of reaching for that million as a, as a net new reach target, it's now 600,000 at the high end. But if we finish the, if we close 250,000 of net new, we still end the year with a half million in the bank. So I'd be happy with that. So Jeremy, long lasting in, in today's day and age in SaaS world means cash and profitability. Walk me through where you're at today. So if you do $120,000 this month, how much will you burn or are you break even? No, we're not break even. So we have um, a monthly burn, a uh, monthly burn. Well, a monthly burn of 134,000, but given all of the current enterprise contracts, we have, so that's gross. Our net burn um, is 55,000. That includes all of the current contracted revenue. And so that, that's the number that gets us to the 600 and I think $660,000 target, which would make us break even. And had we been a million, if we were able to get to a million, maybe we still can, just don't know given the current state of affairs. That puts us at four hundred thousand profit. Let me just run that back by you. So your current monthly recurring revenue is about one hundred twenty thousand dollars per month. Mm -hmm. Your total expenses, your so your gross burn, you said is about one hundred thirty four thousand dollars per month. Uh, yes, that's right. So when if you subtract those two, that would mean your net burn is about negative ten thousand per month. Correct. So, so yes. So I. The, the del there's a delta here. There, there's revenue. Yes, um, I'm, I, I think I've actually gave you a enterprise uh, revenue number, not included the direct to advisor revenue number, that, that additional revenue that we get from firms coming to us directly. And so okay. I apologize if there's a delta between the two. Um, and and there's uh, we also have not included in the annual reoccurring revenue one-time fees like onboarding, white labeling, things of that nature. So I do think that uh, it, it's it's more, I think the number is actually closer. We ended 2019 with about 1.1 million in, um, in subscription revenue, enterprise subscription revenue. And um, let's see that, that, so, and then the enterprise ARR on that is a, is a million, uh, 1 million 47,000. So it is, I think that's the the more accurate number. Got it. So let me just repeat this back to you. You have some direct to financial advisor relationships and some one-time fees that make you profitable every month? Uh, depending upon the month, yes. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Yeah. So what is that you, you said when you just told me your net burn, you said 50,000. So I, I'm just trying to figure out how you get in any month, how you get to net burn. of Is that positive 50,000 or negative 50,000? Uh, so that's negative fifty thousand. Okay, got that. Okay, so worst case, you're burning fifty thousand a month. Some months that's, you that's, might get up to break even or cash flow positive if you exactly sell right. a lot at one time. That's, that's exactly right. Got yeah. it. Okay, so so let's talk about like COVID response. What was your team size before the virus hit? So the team size before the well, the team size in eighteen was five. And then we brought in a chief technology officer, best decision we could have ever made at the beginning of of twenty. And, and so that added um, a sixth person. And then our COVID response uh, was unfortunately having to lay off one employee okay. so far. And, and what that did, we did that and we applied for PPP. Um, and uh, we didn't make the first round, ironically. But how, we, much, how much were you eligible for on the form? 113,000. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. And so uh, effectively what as far as our planning is concerned, we had to do the one layoff and then we have a 90 day plan. Basically in Q2, we want to at least have uh, between a hundred to $200,000 of signed MSAs in their first round of edits to meet our goal. Like if we do that, we're not going to make, we're not going to take any additional action. If we don't, if we have a Q2 that's very similar to a Q1 where there's no positive data points that enterprises are wanting to spend, then we're probably going to have to take a second round of actions, which will be most likely uh, uh, one or two furloughs. What does gross revenue churn look like over the past 12 months? Zero. Okay. You, so you don't have any of the 15 or 16 customers have downgraded or canceled? No, so it, but, to be, but to be fair, they're in three-year contracts. So we're not like next year is the better time to ask that question. Right? People are going to want to know how you convince people to sign a three-year contract on day one. How do you do that? That's like magic. It Well, it, it, it's it's 
really, um, I mean, we're in a really interesting industry. Again, there's not any competition for us. I mean, we are by ourselves, effectively. I would say the closest, I should, I'll, I'll caveat that. We're by ourselves in North America. In um, in Canada, there is a competitor that we respect uh, greatly, which is uh, fine, Bob. But other than that, there's not a lot of options. And we're a startup. We're a startup that isn't flush with a lot of growth capital. And so the partners that we're working with, all of these major enterprises, see the enduring change that we're trying to make in the industry and and absolutely have, um, have been really embracing this notion of these three-year contracts to give us some revenue stability so we can grow. So they've been, I get, I tip my hats off to the industry. They've and been, then, okay, so you so you will charge someone $70,000 per year. You'll have them commit to three years. If they're unhappy in month 14 and ask for a refund on the final two years, do you give them a Re, like or not a refund because they haven't paid you yet i don't think but do you let them get that money back um can you repeat the question I'm sorry yeah I if you sell me a seventy thousand dollar a year plan and i commit yeah. to three years in month yeah. 14 if i'm just not happy what happens so in month 14 well uh, the contract would require you to still pay on the contract now in the event that that were to happen we would probably negotiate a settlement so we would say no you don't have to pay the full two years but pay us this and we'll release you okay do you do you have any expansion revenue in other words sometimes three-year contracts like this people forget to build in natural accelerators like a five-year like in natural increase in the acv so you actually have expansion yeah. revenue how do you yeah, drive expansion do. revenue when you lock in terms so our terms allow us to increase the base subscription um, 10% every year. Okay. Uh, have you done that yet or no? Is it too early? We, we haven't done it up in, we, we, I, I was going to say we haven't done it yet, but that's not true. As of last week, we actually created a platform pricing fee schedule. So uh, everything I've been talking to you about right now is really uh, a la carte pricing uh, for each of the different modules that we have. And we just, came up with our a platform pricing, which includes everything that has baked into it our first 10% increase. I see. Okay. So you expect to have about 10% net, uh, sorry, 10% expansion over the next 12 Not months. Sure, net new. That's exactly right. Zero gross will mean 110% net revenue retention. Right. That's right. Yeah. Interesting. What are you paying to get a new $70,000 a year customer? So we are paying uh, exactly $30,686. Okay, and that's for the three-year contract for that's correct. three-year contract. Okay, and that average contract value is again about seventy thousand dollars a year. Yeah. Okay, so I mean that's a very healthy payback period for four months, five months. Yeah, yeah, four or five. Yep, that's right. It's great. Um, do you get more aggressive on spending during COVID or le or less aggressive on spending on acquisition? Yeah, specifically oh, uh, money absolutely. towards customers. No, actually, so what's baked into that price is. Um, is really account-based selling and inbound marketing. So we, it's, it's that doesn't change for us, given the fact that we don't spend anything. We don't spend anything on paid search. We don't pay, spend anything on brand advertising. Uh, all our, our the primary um, items that make up our CAC are um, our CEO is our chief revenue officer. So a percentage of his salary. We've got a freelancer that helps us with um, uh, marketing. And and we test a couple of lead gen platforms here or there, and so very small amounts. So it's not a lot of money, and that doesn't change given you know our it's it's such a rounding error on our on our overall opex. Hmm. So interesting. Are you raising any additional capital right now? We are. We just um, we just actually uh, uh, gave a mandate to an investment bank yesterday after after going through a, a pretty rigorous process, and uh, they are going to help us either look for, um, well, generally help us uh, find a strategic. I mm -hmm. think that's that's their mandate. You so, want to sell to a strategic? Oh, well, it's either have a minority investment. It's all obviously going to depend on the valuation, but it will either be a minority investment or a majority. I mean, we'll, we'll see which way it goes. What, uh, what yeah. revenue multiple do you think you convince them to go with for value, from a valuation perspective? <sighs> that's... Uh, I'm going to defer that question. I'd rather the IBs come up with that. Um, I mean, I'd love the 10x on that, yeah. but uh, we'll see. Um, yeah. We'll see what we can get. Interesting. All right, yeah. let's wrap up here, Jeremy, with the famous five. Number one, favorite business book? Uh, I mentioned it earlier, The Infinite Game by Simon Sinek. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Uh, currently, Elon Musk. Really no. interested in him. Yep. And number three, favorite online tool for building the company? HubSpot. And number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? 
seven to eight. I wake up at four thirty a.m. every morning, go to sleep at nine thirty p.m. That's good. And what's your situation? Married, single, kids? Married, two kids, a seven and eight. Busy guy. All right. And how old are you? I'm sorry. How old are you? Oh, 49. 49. Last question. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? Not to be so. So I've been a serial entrepreneur my entire life. And if I could tell and so I got started in my 20s. And if I could tell that person one thing, it would be to uh, it, it, it not be so hard on myself. I've, I've experienced great success. I've also experienced great failure. And I would say that the failures have been so instrumental in my success since those failures, much more so than any previous success I've had. And, and uh, those, uh, I, I need to honor that experience. I need to honor that education. And that's what I would tell my 20 year old self. Guys, there we have it. True Lytics just hit 1.2, 1.3 million in ARR up from uh, about half that just a year ago. So over 100% year over year growth rate. They have about 16 enterprise customers paying $70,000 per year. A lot of three year contracts in there. They are burning, you know, in a, in a bad month, $50,000 in terms of net burn. However, that will fluctuate up with some one time fees and, and some services they're selling directly to advisors. They've raised 3.5 million bucks due to this team of five people uh, as they look to continue to scale. $30,000 CAC, four month payback period. Jeremy, we're rooting for you, man. Thanks for taking us to the top. Thanks a ton. You be safe. All right. What'd you guys think? You know, a lot of people hate how strong I am in these interviews, but I do it to get data so founders can better showcase their success. Still, some people click the down thumb below. If you guys like these interviews, we got to counter those people. Click the up, click the thumbs up button below if you want more founder interviews. We've got a heck of a one coming up on next Monday, May 19th. You don't want to miss that. Additionally, be sure to click the subscribe button below and then the little bell notification to make sure you don't miss any new interviews we put out. New founder interview every day at 2 p.m. Eastern. Additionally, if you're curious what book I'm reading this week, Technical Revolutions and Financial Capital by Carlotta Perez. We go live every Thursday at 6 p.m. and we will discuss this book this Thursday at 6 p.m. when we go live. Be sure to tune in live. And then lastly, if you wanna text me and get closer for some fun updates, Excel files, and more, my number is 415-237-9869. And lastly, if you wanna take this conversation into a group, we have a great Slack group for founders and investors at nathanlacka.com forward slash Slack. If you wanna join there now. All right, guys, remember, new founder interviews every day at 2 p.m. Eastern, and we're go live every Thursday at 6 p.m. I'll see you on Thursday.